welcome to this video tour of this pre-owned XE42 with myself, Stuart Abernethy from X Yachts in Great Britain. This yacht is at a very privileged start in life, being built for one of the shareholders at X Yachts in Denmark and lavished with almost all the optional extras that can be fitted. The attention to detail is apparent above and below decks, which you'll soon see. For her first season, she used a handful of times in Denmark, then winterized back at the Danish Yard. Subsequently, she was sold to her current owners who have lightly cruised her on the south coast of England with their young family. So stepping aboard at the gate, the curved glass windscreen protects the cockpit well with a canvas spray hood currently stowed below. Moving forward, she has all flush hatches recessed into the teak decking, which is still in super condition and shows no sign of significant wear. The above deck jib furler not only aids visibility under the jib for cruising, but has less friction than a below deck system. The locker in the bow is for wet stowage, so items like fenders disappear into the aft section, while the 50 metres of anchor chain is sighted forward. A saltwater rinse down is also fitted there. Then working your way aft, the self-tacking jib track is prominent. If you prefer the standard 106% jib, this track can be removed. While the self-tacker has been tested, it's never been used, so the 90% jib remains like new. The mast is by John Mast, a custom mast for the XC42, fractionally rigged, twin spreaders, aft swept with solid rod rigging for the very best sailing control. Another key feature is the in-boom furling system, powered by the electrical winch in the cockpit. The sail rolls onto the carbon fibre mandrel within the boom. All mainsail handling with the system is from the cockpit and it involves very little manual effort. Single or short-handed sailors will certainly appreciate the benefits of this. And working back into the enclosed safe cockpit, we'll look at some more details. The fixed and solid feeling cockpit table houses a nine inch Raymarine hybrid touch plotter. There's also autopilot controls and a secondary VHF station. A nice upgrade over the standard yacht is the engine and bow thruster controls move from low down to up on top of the binnacle for easy manoeuvring in tight harbours. And the engine start stop and transom door controls are mounted within the recess. All the winches are by Anderson, full stainless steel. The primaries are 58 self tailing and the main sheet and halyard winches are the 46 version. There are two Raymarine A75s in the garage with a remote control from the cockpit table. There are minimal jammers due to the in-boom furling system requiring less running rigging. This port halyard winch is powered. And moving aft, you see a glimpse of the sexy black GRP helming system, the hydraulic backstay adjustment, and of course the essential gin and tonic seats. And below the waterline, she's been copper coated in 2019 so this will have many years of hassle-free life left. As the thruster retracts into the hull, I can tell you about the sail inventory. All are by North Sails, 2014. They're fully batten main and 106% jib are in the best North 3DI material and in very good condition. The 90% self-tacking jib is virtually unused. She also comes with an A3 asymmetric with Carver top-down furling system. The draft is 2.1 meters on the L-shaped keel. She has a sail drive system with three blade folding propeller and a rope cutter fitted. The transom of the yacht is in the open position for stern two mooring or boarding by dinghy and it's moving to its sailing position closed. Just visible above that are the removable stainless steel davits for the dinghy. And below decks, she still looks very sharp with the light upholstery still like new. For spending time aboard, the extensive storage will not go amiss. The 520 litres of fresh water in tankage below the cabin sole means the space under the port saloon seating is available. Varnish is in exceptional condition with barely a blemish anywhere. All antique with a satin varnish finish. The starboard saloon seating is a nice fold down table with a drink storage behind. This is also long enough to use as a sea berth. And moving into the owner's ensuite cabin, a great size double berth, 
with practical storage and shelves and lockers on the freeboard. There are nice X-shot hull windows which let more light in and are super when at anchor. The heads is a good size and fitted with an electrical Jabsco marine toilet linked to a 55 litre gravity release holding tank. There's even space for a dedicated showering area with a folding splash screen and automatic shower pump out system. And moving back to storage in the owner's cabin, there's a double cabinet with hanging and shelf space and four very practical drawers below. A nice detail is a stainless steel protection on the woodwork. The cabin sole is very hard wearing and has a teak and holly fill detailing. And working her way back into the saloon, she has four 130 amp hour AGM batteries located under the starboard seating, powering all but the main engine. And moving towards the chart table, there's analog gauges for fuel and water but a more accurate digital battery monitor system controlling the charger and inverter systems. There's space for a second plotter, but not fitted as often these days due to iPad connectivity. Again, varnish here is still late and new, and she has very deep, useful drawer storage here as well. The aft heads compartment is also a shower and again the heads is electrical and connected to another 55 litre holding tank. The starboard aft cabin has the cockpit cushions and a spray hood stowed neatly. Good general storage on shelves and in a hanging locker. Also one of the outlets for the Eberspacher diesel heating system. And looking at the companionway, the varnish work mirrors the flawlessness of the rest of the interior. She has two good stainless steel handrails, making her very safe when making passage. The galley is in a very practical U shape and has an excellent deep storage. The white Korean surfaces are very durable and combined with very deep fiddles make a very usable galley at sea. Along with the microwave and deep 140 litre chest fridge, she has a double sink with a second tap for salt water. The optional front opening fridge has also been fitted. On the cabin sole, you can see a black manual pump for the fresh water as well. And moving to the port aft cabin, the berth actually mirrors the starboard cabin in size, but this cabin has actually more locker space uh, as it's a double. And panning back to the saloon, and I'll delve a little deeper into some of the more technical aspects of X-Shots by looking into some of the systems and access. Here the electrical panel is housed within a dry GRP box with a numbering and labelling system that links directly to the extensive owner's manual for fault finding. And onto the engine, the access to the Volvo D255 is excellent. The engine itself has a meagre 484 hours since new and has been regularly serviced. Normal access below the companionway steps to belts and impeller. Through the starboard aft cabin, further access to the sail drive, secondary fuel filter, oil filter and dipstick. The tunnel behind the engine is where the generator can be mounted, but in this yacht it's currently further storage. All around the engine bay, the soundproofing and vibration dampening is first class. It's fully airtight with forced ventilation. The access from the port cabin 
is the electrical elements of the engine and the raw water intake valve. Further dedicated access for the raw water filter and primary fuel filter are here, all with dedicated lighting throughout. Moonfish is offered ashore in Hamble Point Marina and fully prepared for your inspection and that of your surveyor. Full PDF specifications can be emailed. Footage was taken in April 2020. So thank you for watching. My name is Stuart Abernethy. My contact details are on the screen and I'd be more than happy to speak about this yacht or anything else X-Yacht related. Thank you.